I'm inspired because this is what you tweeted out recently. The good news. We have a drug that is very effective at delaying the onset of death and preserving health span. Yes. And then it goes on. This drug is called exercise and nothing else rivals it. And you go on from there. But this this seems like rule number one. Exercise. Yeah. I'm not convinced there's any intervention that can delay death as long as exercise. So when you're talking about the lifespan side of that ledger of longevity, um, I could think of some exceptions, right? If you took somebody that has familial hypercholesterolemia, which is a genetic condition that gives you cholesterol through the roof, that's probably someone for whom getting them on lipid lowering therapy in their 20s will have a bigger effect on the length of their life over the next 80 years. But, you know, I'd have to start thinking of those types of examples to come up with a scenario under which there's an intervention that is more powerful than exercise to lengthen your life. Wow. Now consider something more important, which is even if exercise didn't lengthen your life one day, I would still argue it is the single most important thing to do because of its effects on health span. And remember what we said earlier, at the end of the day, more people care about how well they live and how long they live. Mm-hmm. The difference between 80 and 85 and 90 isn't nearly as important as what you were able to do during that last decade. And the impact that exercise has on both your cognition and your physical body, obviously, is enormous. In fact, I don't think there's an intervention that has a greater impact on your brain than exercise. Again, there are extreme examples that can violate that. You're going to talk to Matt Walker and he'll explain to you that if someone has really, really horrible sleep, Mm -hmm. it's going to compromise their cognition. And absolutely that's true. And it's going to increase their risk of dementia. But when you go outside of sort of the pathological, um, I think exercise is, is really hands down the most important drug we have to preserve our body and to preserve our mind. Wow. Okay. So the next question on everyone's mind is what kind? You know, do I do the the pounding hit class where I you know I have to do a t- tons of intensive cardio, or do I go to the gym and lift weights, or do I do Pilates? You know, what kind? So again, if you're sort of arguing this from the standpoint that I would argue it, which is through total longevity, which means how do you extend life and how do you enjoy life better? It's going to be a bit of all of the above in the sense of it's really about strength, stability aerobic efficiency and anaerobic power. Those are really the four components that we break exercise down into. And each of those must be trained for with a very deliberate sense of uh, what you're doing. You know, I think that the biggest challenge with exercise is that most people are kind of rudderless, you know, they're, they sort of, you sort of know it's important. You're, you, you, you kind of know I should be doing this thing, but there's very little specificity around what they're doing. And I believe that if you're going to really train to be kind of a kick-ass person in the last decade of their life, you need to train with the specificity of an athlete. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to be training like you're a football player, but if you think that Tom Brady isn't very specific in what he does to prepare for what he did for the last, you know, 22 years, um, uh, that's crazy, right? If, if mm-hmm. you know any, you pick any athlete at the top of their game nothing they're doing is not deliberate. And we have to be the same way if we're trying to be incredible 90 year olds. Uh, And our training has to be predicated on those four fundamental pieces. So how would that look? You know, for the, I know you've got a a (laughs) amazing uh, regiment that you do, but for the rest of us, average humans, what, how could that work realistically for, you know, the, the busy people listening to the show or watching it? Like what's realistic? What would you say to kick it off? I mean, I always start, I I start with the, I put the question to, to a patient the other way. I would say, what do you want to be able to do in the marginal decade of your life? I I call the marginal decade of your life, the last decade of your life. So we're all going to die. Therefore we will all have a last decade of life. Um, you don't know when you enter the marginal decade, but you know when you're there, right? Most people kind of know when they're in that last decade of your life, but it's not entirely clear the minute you enter it. But nevertheless, we can get a sense of who we're going to be in that last decade. And I ask people to tell me what they want to be able to do 
mean, if I have to do it in great specificity, right? So I, I don't want to hear, oh, I just want to be able to, you know, move around pain-free and play with my grandkids. It's like, no, no, no. It's got to be much more granular than that. Like, I want to know exactly how you want to play with your grandkids. Mm. I want to know exactly where you want to be hiking. I want to know exactly how many steps you want to be able to walk up, exactly how many pounds you want to be able to carry, you know, that kind of stuff. Once you have that roadmap, and, and we use this model, we call this the centenarian decathlon, right? So, you know, what do you want to be able to do? What are the 10 things that you want to be able to do physically at the end of your life in that last decade? You then work backwards from there and you say, well, first of all, doing those things implies that you can do this. So for example, to be able to climb so many stairs with, you know, X pounds of groceries implies you have a VO two max of this. And if you have VO two max of that, when you're 85, how high does it need to be when you're 75 and when you're 65 and when you're 55 and when you're 45, because all of the things that you want to be able to do, you're getting to get worse at as you get there, obviously. So you have to be able to start from a high enough position where you are currently. So that by the time the glider gets down to that last decade, you're able to still meet your objectives. So there's no question you're going to be deteriorating. You just want to make sure that you get your base up high enough that the deterioration still lands you in a good place. Exactly. And I want people to go through that process, which is called backcasting. So in other words, don't sit here where you are today and try to forecast where you want to be, go to the end of the line and backcast to where you are now, because mm. most people are going to be in for a rude awakening. Well, I was, I was just going to ask, like, how late is too late to begin this? It's never too late, Megan, but it's, um, look, it's like saving for retirement. Okay. If a 60 year old decides that they want to save for financial freedom, they're going to have a harder time doing it than a 40 year old. And it's the same here, right? If a person is 60 and they've never exercised a day in their life, it's not too late to start, but I'd be lying to them if I said that they're not going to have a much harder time achieving ambitious goals than someone who starts at 40. Yeah. You're not going to land in the same place as that other person, unless you just go no, you know, it, it, to an extreme level. I got it. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.